Public servants. People who work for the government or the civil service in some way or another. Um, generally meant to be giving public service. In the past, <coughs> if you were a kind-hearted, soft person that wanted to help people, rather than try to rip them off and destroy them, or you're somebody who got more pleasure out of helping people and improving their lives, rather than being driven around in a Rolls Royce or, and living in a mansion, then public service and the civil, all the civil service or similar kind of public service jobs were for you. However, in recent times, it hasn't been like that. Now, over here, for example, the health system is generally mostly um, provided by the government um, in very simple terms. Um, doctors and nurses are generally, in very simple terms, government employees. They're paid for by the government and most of it is funded out of taxation. OK, so bear that in mind. In the past, people took the view that they joined medicine and the fire service or became teachers because it was a vocation. It was something that they wanted to do. It never paid the highest salaries. It was never meant to. Because it is funded out of taxation, the view was that um, the taxpayer couldn't afford to pay the absolute best salaries. And if you wanted to get a huge gigantic salary well perhaps the public sector wasn't really for you and you'd be better off in business where they hire and fire at will um, they can make you redundant just because they feel like it um, although there are lots of legal protections often those are bypassed and if you want to become rich you take your risks in the in the private sector on the other hand, the public sector offered excellent pensions compared to many in the private sector. Um, people didn't always have to work as hard in the public sector. They would be expected to in the private sector. And in the public sector, if you were just incompetent but trying your best, then they would prefer to train you rather than sack you, generally. I mean, there may be exceptions, you know, in certain medical jobs for example and things like that but generally they prefer to try and find you alternative work in some way okay if you just weren't suited that kind of thing whereas in the private sector they just think you're no good we'll get rid of you now what's this got to do with anything well it's part of you something you have to understand that people who went into um the public sector generally were expected to understand the pay would not be very good they were expected to understand that. But in return, as I said, they would have the satisfaction of being able to help people if that's what they wanted to do. They would have the satisfaction that they may be doing something that was a noble cause in many cases. And they would have comparative job security that the private sector generally just couldn't offer in general, in most cases. OK, and if you take a job, for example, like a firefighter, or being a teacher in a state school. Um, Americans would call that a public school, but to, in Britain, a public school is a private school for very rich people. But in most countries all over the world, the word public school, the phrase public school would mean a school for poor people, a school for, you know, most people. Okay? Anyway, and well, in recent times, um, the nurses have gone on strike and refused to work because they think they're not paid enough. Um, the doctors have gone on strike because they think they're not being paid enough. Um, the firefighters have recently um, voted to go on strike, but they haven't done so yet, but they intend to. And the teachers have also voted to go on strike. So they're not happy either, I believe. That's my understanding, okay? But in general terms, the teachers... The firefighters and the unions want to go on strike because they apparently think an approximately 10% pay rise is not enough, they believe, because of the cost of living crisis. Now, some people um, in the media have said something along the lines of these people want to be grateful they've got a job at all. They want to be grateful of the excellent pensions they get, the excellent um, job security they have. 
how during the pandemic, for example, many people lost their jobs because companies just decided they couldn't afford to keep people on anymore. Even though the government offered, um, you know, so a furlough scheme where a large amount of their salaries were, pa were kept, paid for by the government just to keep people in a job. Often, once that ended, some companies decided to just get rid of people anyway because they thought, well, you know, there just isn't a business anymore, even after pretty a lot of this ended, because a lot of the public were now scared to buy luxury items or spend money on things that weren't necessities, and it became the cost of living crisis, and, the, and a lot of private sector workers lost their job because of this, because people weren't buying things, because they were spending their money on necessities rather than some optional luxuries. And so many people think that the um, public... But to the, sorry, the public sector workers should just be grateful they've even got a job. Um, the government has basically had enough of these strikes. And so basically is bringing in a new law um, to say that if there is a strike, then they must offer a minimum level of service. Unlike now where they can just say we're going out and we're just not going to turn up at all. And if people die, so be it. That's the way it is at the moment. Um, recently, for example, also the ambulance drivers went on strike and refused to drive the ambulances. And I believe that the um, army had to come in and drive the ambulances instead. And the, pub and the government's just had enough of this and said this is ridiculous. Um, you know, and is uh, bringing out a new law saying they can't do this anymore that they must provide a minimal level of service during a strike and not everybody will be able to go on strike only some will be able to go on strike so they could perhaps say um we're not going to turn up to certain things if it's not an absolute urgent emergency how this will work i don't know in practice however the opposition aren't happy about this. The opposition party are absolutely appalled that nurses, um, firefighters and ambulance drivers and doctors and people like that will be forced to go to work or risk getting the sack. They think it's absolutely disgraceful that the um, public should not um, have their lives saved when they need it. They think it's a disgrace that the public could expect to be saved when they need it. And they are on the side of the striking workers and they think that if people die, so be it, pretty much. Um, they think it's more important that the public sector workers get be allowed to um, go on strike because they're not happy with the pay and if lives get lost so be it rather than protecting the public and being on the side of the public and saying well these people knew the terms and conditions when they joined and if they don't like it they should perhaps consider leaving altogether now in about a year or so's time i believe there will be a new another general election this will be when Um, the public get to choose who the next leader will be, whether it will remain oh, oh yes, the latest it can be will be January 2025 but I believe it will be some time that it's very rare that it will be held in um, 20, in January because normally they prefer to hold a general election in the summer just because it's warmer, simple as that they don't like the idea of people being forced to have an election when there might be snow or very cold weather and it might discourage some people from going out on health grounds, okay? anyway um so basically, realistically, um, the next general election, when people choose the Prime Minister, will be realistically next year now. Um, and, you know, given that the opposition would like to be in charge rather than the government, I find a very strange way of encouraging the public to vote for them 
by saying they're on the side of employees not wanting to work when they're in life critical roles. You know, I mean, the fire, you know, phoning up the fire brigade and saying, um, my house is on fire, please, and I'm trapped, please come and save me. And the fire brigade saying, tough luck, um, we're not going to save you because, um, we want more money, just isn't really acceptable, you know. Um, you took the pay when, you know, there wasn't a problem. Most of the time the fire brigade do absolutely nothing. They're just mostly sitting around, waiting for anything to happen, waiting to be called out, probably playing cards, probably watching the telly for entertainment. I mean, in fairness, that is the job, you know, they obviously have to train for it as well. I have seen a fire... A real one across the street from me when a house did literally set fire when um, a gas cooker apparently exploded it was in the news um, the police were all c also called out and you know stopped people going up and down the road where I live um, for about a week or so um, so I have seen them I tried to sort them actually go into a burning bill into the burning building and try and put the fire out I saw them actually put the fire out so I do understand as well that they do that people like firemen do risk their lives but they know that when they joined they know it doesn't offer the best salary they know it and many people are saying well you're saying you can't live on it but many people have to live on much lower salaries than what they're actually being paid and a lot of um, people feel they're being offered a better pay rise there are many people in the private sector who are told quite simply be grateful you've even got a job at all and so I really don't see how the public are going to be that um, keen to vote for um, a party which is on the side of workers deciding they don't want to save lives who are paid to save lives without being fired for refusing to save lives now at the moment they can do it because the law said so but the current government have brought in a, bring in a new law saying they won't be able to do it but they've said the opposition say that if they become in charge they would repeal that law and go back to the situ current situation where employees can just suddenly decide to go and strike and refuse to save lives even if their job is to save lives and i just don't think it's going to be popular for the public um although maybe i probably wouldn't know this um example i mean well, what am i talking about no um i mean is although most people would not normally do this okay a lot of people have, have even both have even been phoning up um lbc and talk radio and places like that saying that they're on the side of the government indirectly they think it's disgusting that these um public sector workers should be able to refuse to um save lives without quitting their job altogether the view is that the pay isn't that bad and they should be grateful um, of a job and you know with some p nurses and others saying they're using free food banks other people saying they do not know why this is the case because other people are managing to survive on much less than they are being paid okay and so they've lost a lot of sympathy I think of the public on this who feel that um, you know they're paid enough and times are hard anyway and they should be grateful for what they have so that's the current situation um, my view a lot of it's just greed um, but it's highlighted an issue that perhaps um, people who were meant to be go, go into the profession because they were meant to put others first and they're sort of kind selfless people who wanted a job where they would be allowed to put other people first and rewarded through job security through putting other people first have decided to become greedy capitalists and just try to get as much money as they can out of the government um, by basically threatening um, lots of people with death if they don't have what they want some people feel this might tip the um, current government over the edge and be um, basically encourage them to do privatization of the health service and other things where because often private companies simply won't put up with this generally and would simply tell their staff if you don't like the pay 
leave. Um, although there have been strikes within the private sector as well. For example, my city of Coventry is the first place in the first city in the country um, to go where Amazon have decided to go and strike. The Amazon workers in Coventry who worked at um, a fulfilment warehouse have decided they weren't being paid enough so decided to go and strike and refused to basically um, provide any orders for Amazon um, during the strike. And my city was the first country, sorry, sorry, not, sorry first city, <coughs> stop. <coughs> my city was the first um, in the country for Amazon work of um, that employed Amazon workers to do so, ever. Okay, and some Amazon workers, I think an Amazon worker who spoke to a journalist said um, something along the lines of, if they can, aff if the guy who owns Amazon can afford to send people into space for fun, or I think her words were as a hobby, exact words were as a hobby, then she felt that they could afford to pay more money to their staff. I can perhaps understand a different argument on that, perhaps with some private sector employees who feel that um, if, you know, the person in charge of it was one, was or was once the richest person in the world, maybe they could afford to give people more money, or maybe they see large profits. However, with the government, they're not there to make a profit, they're just there to provide a service. Okay, and I'm personally of the view, if you don't like the pay, just leave. Now, I can understand if they were given a pay cut, they might think that isn't entirely fair, because they might take the view um, they accepted, you know, a deal on certain terms and conditions, and if those terms and conditions are made worse, and then I can understand people perhaps thinking that's not really fair because they didn't agree to that in the first place. They might think, well, if they had known that would happen, they might not have accepted the original contract anyway. But that's not the case. They've been given a pay rise, although they feel it's a pay cut um, because they f of the you know, inflation. But you have to look at this both ways. Supposing the prices in the shop suddenly got very, very a lot, lot cheaper one day. Supposing instead it went the other way around. It was the way around. And suddenly there was mass production on a level never seen before. To such an extent that everything was done by robots and more than it is now, even things like, you know, things on a farm, more than it is now, and there was even more automation than it is now, and the prices reduced drastically. Do you think that these nurses and firefighters would be suddenly saying, oh, we now realise that um, prices have got much cheaper. We will take a pay cut. I very much doubt it. Um, very rarely um, people do agree to a pay cut without them having to take it. Um, I believe, for example, Tim Cut of Apple doesn't technically have to accept a pay cut, but he's accepted one because he feels or something along those lines, or he's agreed not to take as much as he's entitled to because of a potential st shareholder revolt. Um, once, for example, there was MPs, and I know they will astonish people, but yes, MPs, um, there was an independent um, body that looked into MPs' pay, and they said that MPs weren't being paid enough, and suggested a huge pay rise for MPs, and the MPs voted to refuse it, because they felt it was too much money. Yes, you heard that correctly. Politicians turning down a pay rise. Because they felt the public just wouldn't stand for it. They thought it wasn't right. When some of the members of the public were suffering. They felt it would look terrible. If they actually accepted the pay rise. Which was recommended to them. And so they actually refused it. And said because they thought it, the pay rise was too much. You know, I'm not making this up. Impossible to believe. But actually true. It did happen over here in Britain. But this was many, many years ago. Okay, I can't remember when now. So there you go. My take on this: they should just do the job and be grateful they've actually got a job. And if they really don't like doing what they're doing, they should just quit the job and find another one, or find another job first, then quit their job. 
And that's my take on it. And yes, I know people say I'm hypocritical because I haven't got a job at the moment. But there you go. Um, I'm not taking money for doing for doing a job and then saying I'm not going to do it. But I expect you to keep my job for me. Okay. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.